there's a whole bunch of stuff under the communications committee. So when we get to that, you just take it and cover everything you got. And yeah. I may have one or two other things under that too, but for good, we'll just go committee by committee and put all the topics under that okay. fit. Okay, well we will let's go ahead and call the meeting to order at eleven at seven eleven. That's the time. Uh, the sign in sheet is going around if you haven't seen it yet. Is it back there? All right. And we do have one, two, three, four, five. We do have a quorum and uh, we do have uh, the correct at least the minimum number met for voting members. Uh, for voting on on motions. Uh, you must be a member of the uh, county party, which at this point still includes any state party members, as well as registered uh, to vote libertarian. That defines voting members. So meeting both standards, then you're able to vote on motions on the floor. Uh, out of the agenda, uh, the agenda you have in front of you, any items to add to the agenda? Anything you don't see listed there that you want to add at this point? I, I put on, I've got on convention now. On my notes too. Uh, well, and the red light. Sorry, let me just take a look at that. Red light cameras, take a look well, at that. I, stuff I was going to talk about just related to communications committee stuff. So yeah, that everything will come under your communications then when you come up here. You've got open floor there. Okay. <coughs> Okay, then without objection, we'll take the agenda as presented. Um, as we go through then each of these and the reports, uh, we'll take motions also with that. So as we're going through everything, which is slightly different order than we've done in the past, but as we go through down this list uh, by committees, anything that fits under that committee, we can discuss at that time and take that. And that'll take everything off the back end of the meeting. Um, just an opening comment here as we get into the chair section. Um, the, you may know the federal government's latest uh, intrusion into liberty in the, with the FCC's proclamation that the internet is a utility and therefore the government has the right to regulate, regulate it, um, is not getting the level of concern it should. Um, I, see, I see very little difference in this than if you know, King George had proclaimed ownership of the printing presses in his day. There really is no difference. Um, and even he wasn't that bold uh, to, to have tried to get away with that. Um, yeah, they're going yeah, to <laughs> regulate the internet. That, that's ex that's extremely dangerous. Uh, that's an extremely dangerous step. And of course that it was done by uh, an unelected uh, three out of five votes uh, that is, is even worse. Um, I contacted, uh, I posted some things online, was surprised that there wasn't a huge backlash to that. Uh, posted some things online, uh, set up a, um, a group, uh, Floridians for a Fed Free Internet, and invited uh, the Liberty Leaders, the people from various Liberty groups in the Tampa Bay area to come and be a part of that, uh, and 38 of them did. Uh, so these are some some tea parties, some Is it a Facebook group. Yeah, uh, so I went on and, and got a bunch of people involved in that that are that are in the liberty movement, and then started uh, just dialoguing a bit about about it. You know how we should respond to what, what we should do. Uh, there was unanimous consent on that. That uh, yes, it's a very big deal. Um, but the, the the most common response was all of all of these people and everyone involved in their organization um, are spread too thin have too many issues and there are too many occurrences of, of new intrusions into liberty happening on a weekly basis now to even respond to any of it. And we always get beaten down every time we think we, I, so I'll just use an example from last December, um, like on Thomas Mass and Justin Moss had come up with an amendment that was supposed to help protect Americans from the NSA and it passed the House by last spring by more than 75 percent. Well, then when it came time for the bill to be finally go through um, NDA last, last December, um, House leadership immediately stripped the Massey Amendment and stuck in, st 
started to stuck something in in place that was even worse than was already there, mm. and said there was no time for discussion. So that's yeah. the type of stuff. That's that's the issue. that's the problem. Yeah, and 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 the, the consensus with all of us with these various groups was that um, none <coughs> of us have the resources, uh, you know, the manpower to to really respond to anything successfully that's going on presently. There are too many things happening to respond to, um, which which is concerning, and that, that's really where my my head's been in the past the past couple of weeks. And I think that 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 makes an excellent case statement for the need for growth <coughs> in, in what we're doing. Um, we have in the past, um, I'll try to speak into the leprechaun, we have, uh, you know, in, in the past year or so now with restructuring the county party and, and the painful bylaws process and everything else that we've done, we've got the framework there, but we need to start bringing in, you know, the numbers now to fill in those committees so that they're not committees in one, so that there are, are more people to do the lifting because we need to be able to respond. When something happens immediately, we need to be able to respond immediately with people. Um, so I would think that's really where our focus needs to be right now is, is on that outreach and that, that number building. Um, so some things to that coming up later in the meeting. Just wanted to throw that out as, as an introductory. Um, I mean, at this point, you know, we, we, we've got eight, ten people that are fairly involved in the county party. Uh, and, um, you know, we need to really, really expand that, expand that number. Um, to that, what, what I've been discussing on this, this group, I threw the idea out of, you may recall, gosh, it may be five or six years ago, uh, there was a big rally in downtown Tampa, uh, mostly Tea Party groups, and a lot of groups were involved down there. There was a huge event down there, uh, and uh, in the middle of the week that, that drew hundreds of people. Uh, and it was on a bunch of different topics. And this is probably six years ago now. Um, and for a while, that generated some momentum. Um, there was not, a, uh, there was not a, a strong libertarian presence at that. There were a couple of people walking around handing out what things. Was the topic of Charlie event? Westlook and a few others. It was, it was more... Um, It was, it was very much kind of a grassroots response to uh, the Obama first election. Prior to the election? Or no, no, right after. Yeah, right after. Pro or con? No, it was, it was opposed. It was, it was definitely a, a Tea Party response. Um, and some of the people that were the organizers for that event, and there hasn't been an event like that since, um, <coughs> are in this group that are communicating. So one of the, one of the things I threw out is perhaps what we need to do since there's so many different areas and so many different uh, directions and groups in this liberty movement with their own focuses. So perhaps what we need to do is look at, hey, come on in. Uh, perhaps what we need to do is look at doing, doing another public rallying event and getting many, many groups to come. And you give everybody their 15 minutes at the microphone on their topic and try to get a large cross-section of people out there uh, so that we can get that ball what, that momentum, that momentum growing. Uh, the idea that that I threw out was doing it on uh, on uh, April fifteenth, okay, which is one of my favorite days of the year. Uh, um, probably a weekday. It's a Wednesday. I know uh, And and uh, and and it's at the uh, I forget the one name of the park uh, downtown. Right. Uh, Courthouse. Is it? A year and a half ago. The park called Honey Downtown. It's right on Kennedy. Well, there's also that. There's a few. This, this, this was held. This was held at yeah, at the gazebo on the one side. Um, yeah. Anyway, so I did that. Um, I threw that idea out, but I wanted to throw that out to you as well. Sort of a Liberty Fair or something that's you know in that idea, just to get groups down, set up tables, we'll have to pull permit, we'll have to do all that. But. Uh, you have to do. There's something. If, you if, just have to notify the if I'm not sure. I think you have to notify them. But if you're planning to use the PA system, you have to have a permit for the PA system. Right. Is that right? The PA system and the permit if you're walking the streets. Okay. If you're staying within the park, then you just need to. I think, it's a, I think it's a plan to get a file. Yeah. I don't think they but I, I think there's a lot of groups that would want to become involved that, that could get involved on their own issues on that and get people there, which at this point I think is probably give us a chance to respond. Would give us a, a platform to have a few people get up and speak on specific issues 
on behalf of the LP, but I, I think at least uh, we'll get some visibility and presence from it. I will say uh, back in October 2013, um, up in Pasco County, I went to something that was called um, the R, R American, OUR American Initiative, and obviously it's probably just doing this. They want to make sure I was, I was pronounced it right. Mm -hmm. um, there's a bunch of liberty oriented groups that went to that event. I don't remember if I, I think I wrote something about it, but I don't remember if I. I asked to see if I could still find it, see exactly which every group that was there. Um, it was organized and put together in Pasco County. And I could try to see if I can still track down which groups were there. And I just need that information. That, but it was in October of uh, 2013. Mm -hmm. and it, was, it was on Saturday afternoon. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if they would be able to do it on Wednesday. But I'd yeah. try to get, get the information. I, I, think, I think we'd want to reach out to as many groups that would be considered kind of under that <laughs> liberty group umbrella well, this, this is the for invitation. So, I mean, pretty much any, I'd every, be able to find them. Every walking person is a candidate for joining up. Yeah. I mean, if it's, um, it's less than a month. I think it's showing numbers. Oh, it's yeah. Month. Yeah. yeah. I know last, when they put this together last time, uh, they had a lot of, uh, uh, in the morning, WFLA support <coughs> for it. Uh, they probably were responsible for getting most of the audience down there. Right, who's, who's in charge of that? And are, are you or your 35 other volunteers? I was going to stick you with it, but no. The, but I, I wanted to get some feedback on what are your thoughts on our coordinating uh, an event, a rally downtown, and inviting these other groups to come, giving folks some microphone time, and uh, trying to get a crowd down there. I mean, we've, we've got to do something to get some momentum to pull in some new folks and re-energize a liberty movement because it's dormant. I think right it's. Now. I think it's a good idea. I just don't know. I think we might need a little more time. I think you probably want to do it on more of a Friday. Yeah. If we don't, if you don't get it done, yeah, that might be good. Right there. But if we don't, if we don't get it done. Doing it on a Saturday or doing it on a. No one's going to be on Saturday. No, I wasn't thinking that. Yeah. No, I was thinking on. Uh, this, this was on a week. When I, if I remember right, this was on a Wednesday or Thursday when it happened years ago, and, and they had a huge turnout. And if you're doing any kind of donations to participate on a Friday, you might get that Friday. Yeah. I don't know that. It's, if it's just an outreach to get people, you're going to make sure that we have, we have the whole time of the event covered. Which oh, yeah. Probably a Saturday uh, before. you got to fill in the Wednesday, whole time. The Wednesday. If we did Saturday before, we do an anti-income tax push well, as well as the yeah, I, yeah, I think there would definitely be a, an IRS topic going on there somewhere, uh, an income tax uh, concern that time of year. That was one thought in and they're doing it at that particular time because you obviously that's 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 in, in fever right now. Four eleven too. Yeah, four eleven. Almost like nine eleven. There you go. <laughs> you know, saying are you going to get as many people downtown on a Saturday? Yeah, maybe maybe not. Yeah. I was thinking definitely. Yeah, this this started Saturday. by six, and there were people already. People will be at work. Yeah. I got down there around two to kind of watch the build up, and and yeah, and there were already people arriving when I got there. Downtown. Yeah. And again, it's, it's, it's having a number of groups involved and a lot of people and all of their outreach and capabilities involved would be important. Something that you might want to consider if you're trying to reach out to other groups, you're just talking for weeks. Mm -hmm. A lot of groups only meet once a month. Yeah. So if you go out well, two months, you at least give them an opportunity to talk to their members. Yeah. You know, we, I mean, we just did this last time with two weeks notice. I don't know that four weeks is... Sure. is well, and, and in, in these groups too, a lot of these groups aren't don't have committees to go through. The people that are already in this this Facebook group uh, are the leaders. I mean, they would just send out notices. We're doing this. This is the date, and their people would come. I know when we do the anti-GMO rallies, we try and always aim for like we're now we're working on the one that's in May right yeah. now. We've been working on it for three weeks because it takes us that long yeah. to get to all the other groups. Not because we need to get to the groups, but when we get to the groups. Their right, sure. Aren't there. Right, no, you need to have time for communication. So, a, a concept, what are your, without getting into the specifics of date, conceptually, what do you think? I like the idea. It'd be good to have visibility for the party. I mean, I think it's sort of our duty, isn't it, to keep people informed? Yeah, I'm, and a, I'm a little confused about the media. I mean, I've gotten zero response from anything outside mm -hmm. the media. Have you guys had any success engaging with media? Well, some, th this event got years back got a lot of media attention media attention because there's a lot of eye candy there they want to show up for the people with the flags and the 
the banners and the speeches and all of that. So there was really good coverage. But you had okay. a really hot topic right then, too. You had Obama. It, it was it, correct, yeah. 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 So I would think it would be something that would draw people to want to come. Yeah. Well, and I think it, it, probably at this point, <coughs> trying to find groups that have specific topics that are their focus, giving them a piece of the of, of that time slot and having them bring their people there is probably the best way to get. And see, that's why I was saying if you did it during the week, you already have that built-in audience. Yeah. yeah. The after-work downtown okay. people. Yeah, instead of getting people there down to again, go back uh, Again down. on the weekend, yeah. Right. You're right. I don't know. I mean, downtown is tough to get in and out of. This was like a 6 o'clock. Well, that's what I'm saying. If you're there already, if you're there working, you know, they do work down there, but yeah, I used to. So. I don't know. You ever gone down there on a Saturday? No, it's pretty dead on. It's, it's pretty dead on. Now, but yeah. You know, yeah. The, what are we doing? I mean, what are the visuals? I mean, is it there a press media event, or are we actually going to go block stores and Verizon buildings? You know, like no, no, plan. no. This, yeah. this is more of a. Look at us. Yeah. Speeches and speakers, and letting people set up, you know, tables and hand out things, and but, uh, but an opportunity for us to get in front of these people. You know, having these groups bring their people there and then we can get up in front of them is, is really what I'm trying to accomplish and the media attention that we go along with that. So you, it would definitely be well, a, well, a libertarian and, you know, conservative-esque collection of people, I would assume. Who of your groups is showing promise for being a big supporter? Who well, again, the 38 people that are in this group, some, some I put on there, some, some of those leaders added other people on. Uh, but these are all people that are local uh, Tea Party 912s, uh, you know, s some other issue, you know, other liberty type issues, gun rights groups, legalization groups. Some of those things are all on there. But that would grow. So I mean that, and 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 this came directly from the internet FCC issue, uh, which would certainly be a topic at this for sure. Do we know when uh, the Congress is going to vote on this? What bill it is, what the bill number is. They don't have to vote on this. Yeah, there's no, Done. There's no vote. The, 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 three, the three, three out of those five people voted that it's now a utility and therefore government can regulate it. So now the government is free to begin to regulate the Internet. The only thing is, I think they That's all there is to it. The to it. They could block it. You know, Congress could block this. But, you know, we're not seeing a whole lot of success about the recently elected Defenders of Liberty that were sent yeah. up there in the last election. They've already caved. Uh, there's a lot of other things on the agenda, but... Why don't we continue to work on this um, in discussion one, online? One other thing real quick on your date. The other thing, when you're looking for a theme and a goal, I heard you guys talking about what is your mission and blah, 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 blah. Um, on your libertarian calendar, that Monday it says that you have Thomas Jefferson's birthday on Monday, April 15th. So you could like, incorporate something funky around all your stuff in his realm somewhere. Mm -hmm. I don't know why that's on your calendar, but that's what's on your that's calendar. That's on our calendar? TJ's birthday made it to our calendar. I'm, I'm just, I've got the Libertarian Party at home for our It's on my school calendar. Oh, it's on our phone calendar, I think. Yeah. So I thought I'd let you know. Um, is that something you want we should pursue then? I have, I have classes on Monday. So I, don't know. I mean, again, not, not with a specific date. Friday before. Um, not necessarily with a date at this point, but. Is there a public relations person with the FCC over there in Tampa? The FCC's, uh, their regional I'd office. I'd set up a meeting with them and go there and videotape our meeting with them. Well, I think that's a separate issue. I mean, I think that's a separate undertaking from this. Yeah. Yes, we need to do something. I mean, we need to do something. We need, like to do some, we need to do something. Yes, we need to do that in terms of the FCC, but I'm talking about specifically a public rally event to get numbers there so that we can get up in front of people is, what, is the purpose of this. All right, so we get numbers because we there. have to keep we this. We get numbers there, but then where do we go with it? We have to keep this perception. Well, we need the we need, day after that date. What do we do? Right, we're collecting names and phone numbers and email addresses, and we're contacting people and trying to get them involved. Why don't we have growing the party and growing its activist base, and using this as a as an event to do that. How about if you did something that was reaching out to people to recruit people? Like if you did a family friendly fun day, I don't care what it would be, but I. And people came so they could learn more about the Libertarian sure. Party. Then you guys could. Well, and that would be a, that would be a good follow up to an event like this, yeah. to plan something, you know, a few weeks down the road from this, where we could invite the people that we met at that to come back and have a specific <coughs> focused Libertarian event. 
we should tie into the uh, fundraising with, you know, if we're going to do this for the FCC thing, I, you know, we should go talk to the Monster Verizon and see if we can get some money out of them. I mean, they get a building with their name on it. Let's get somebody in there can write checks. You think so? You think so? I'm for this, but I'm not for it in any time frame. Something that more discussion and talking is just seems okay. personally, it seems a lot of the details that we want to do to make it more visible requires more okay. cables. Like, because if we want to have it where everyone can come out, we really want it to be look like there's a lot of stuff. So I'm going to have a table that's going to say, and the Fed, and somebody else is going to have a table that's right. got big, and we're all going to have to make signs. We're going to, you know what I mean? We're going to have to kind of just. Well, I think that's the idea that, that it, it, that's the whole point. Three weeks from now. Well, that's the whole point that it isn't just us. us. You know, that's the whole idea. If we well, do something right, that. Well, if we're going to do it, we have to make it, it's perception. We have to make it look like it's an event. So we have to, even though there's going to be an official Libertarian Party filled for a table, right. there should be. Well, that's, we should be that's the point in having 20 other. Down there. So, it does, yeah. so it looks like an event. Right. right. If yeah. 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 Well, that's the idea is that you'd, you'd want to have at least, you know, 10, 20 other groups down there with their own tables and their own setups. Right, but if we had us at each one of these things and people are walking around and we're getting our word out to them, that's what I'm yeah. saying. Well, I don't know that we would have presence at every table out there because not every table would be ours. No, you're not. No, you see what I'm saying? You're not understanding what I'm saying, but right. what I'm saying is that I think there's a, this is a good idea, but it's a lot of details that I don't think we can do in a month. I see, I don't see that many details. I say, then I can, we then say, I can let us know you're going to come. Gonna We're going to give you a space. A lot of work. We're going to set up a space. I, see, I don't see, it, I don't see this as very complicated at all. I see, if you get a group that says they're going to come, they're going to set up their own table, they're going to set up their own display, and they're going to work on promoting to their people. Yeah. Do we have a banner? We end up with a turnout, much like what happened two weeks ago. Deanna and I are both people who coordinate these things, mm -hmm. and both of us are saying, with our experience, this is a lot of work, and you need a lot more time and a lot more people. Yeah. You'd almost be better off to recruit members here and get people here as our group and then reach out and ask people like Pasco and Pulse and stuff, other libertarian committees, to come out and help support us as we're reaching out and mm -hmm. then have a huge event that we could put out professionally. But as Deanna's right, but that does not that does not bring in people from other well, other groups and organizations. Right. I, I know what, right. like you said, if say you saying? reach out to 10 people and all 10 say they're coming, so there's 10, Five there's 10, even if they show up, so there's 10 booths, you're giving people speaking time, and then you want the people to walk around the crowd and go to the different tables. Yeah. Well, if we have more than one table, mm -hmm. then people are going to be interacting with the libertarians throughout the sure. whole event. Right. Instead of just one and listening to our 15-minute spot, we're going to be... And we definitely need to have people... We need to be out there working the crowd for sure. Day. and have five out. people that are... How about commie day? May, May 1st? Yeah, I was just talking about that, too. May day? That's Saturday. That's a month Friday. That's a must. That's some more time, because I'm thinking, what is it? Friday, May 1st. You know, that would be a great angle. Because yeah, it's commie all day long. Yeah. You know, that's not a bad idea. Have an, have an anti, uh, that, have a, a, you want to have a red, white, and blue day instead of just a red uh, <laughs> a red day? <laughs> Absolutely. Is that the idea? Stick it in their face. What they are. A bunch of communists up there. So you have an, you have an anti... Totalitarian, an, an, technically. Yeah, an anti-collectivist uh, rally. Um, that's, that's an interesting that's angle. That's going to be your day right there. That's interesting, yeah. Yeah. By the way, so uh, a couple of the people that I've that I've talked to about this were the ones that put together this other huge event, and it was put together in a week. By the way, this other big event. They were they really um, pissed off because were they really pissed off? Yeah. It was it was a huge, wonderful are, I event. Think these ladies are on the right track. Yeah, for sure. No, it needs to be very well organized. We invite people, but then when we have two people show up, like. Well, that's the point. How we had a failure with the sure. last event. Right. Let's not do that again. Well, I mean, success would have been a room full of the libertarians. I don't care if only two people, people show, show up. up. <laughs> no, only two people showed up for that. The no, I agree. Yeah. Politicians. Yeah. That was good. The two people, but the, the low count in the Camera audience. Camera angle is focused right, right. Yeah. the whole time. I mean, yeah. It, again, it's we didn't splice in the crowd scene. Like, right. Yeah, uh, crowd well, it has no work. Yeah. Oh, and again, yeah. The, the purpose. Yeah, no, I was it's not, it wasn't them. It was the, the purpose then is to get other people concerned with liberty issues that we can be in front of. We'll talk about that later, I guess, the video stuff. But um, May 1st, I said give us an extra two weeks. Yeah. The girls have some good points, which is stuff, put something good together, quality in three weeks. I agree. Six and a half. Well, you have six and and we can weeks. pick our date. So I picked May 1. The May yeah. date, the May 1st isn't, is it's a very Friday. interesting it's idea. It is. Yeah. It's Friday. And it's a Friday. Bring the girl down. Bring your you know, you, 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 uh, people are a lot more receptive on Friday because of Scott Page and Eric 
it moves. You do it on Monday, yeah. you know, people are grouchy from being, Even you know. the monthly people will change. Is there anything going yeah. on at that park down there? It's a musical or anything? Or? Uh, I hope they don't have a mate or Make sure there's not an Occupy thing going on. Why? Today. That'd be well, even better, wouldn't it? Yeah, I don't think are, if they had are they already, still around? If they have an already, I've met some occupied people. Schedule, yeah, they haven't already booked the place. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's a good point. I mean, okay. Well, let, let's 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 move on the agenda since there's a lot more on here. But um, do you want let's to continue to talk on that and let's continue to work on that. On May one, for you to carry the word. Yeah, let, yep, let, let me throw that date out to these other folks. See what they think. Uh, I'll check with the city to see if there's anything going on. If there's anything on the schedule or whatever for that for that park there. And let's just see if it's possible for that date. And, and we'll continue to communicate on that. Uh, th well, this specific one was dealing with the Internet issue. Oh, okay. And that was uh, Floridians for Fed Free Internet, I think is what it was called. Wow. Well, but that could be the event, the group that you send out well, and you can share versus having a group. I don't know. I mean, I, I, don't, I think it would be a good idea to have it, to have it Put on by the county party. We could be a sponsor, and that could be one of the events there. There's so many groups out there too. I mean, you have your turf, you could have four folks. Yeah, we sponsor. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, you get all these folks. Yeah. Give them all the advice. You know, you get the gun right groups out there. I don't have a list of senses. You get a list of people. The, I have some of them. Yeah, you can have mine. Okay, well, let me see that. Let me toss that date around and, see, and look at location and see if that's going to work. Um, Great, thanks. Constitutional Revision Commission. Uh, Which one? Is, this is, I'm on uh, A2, uh, Florida Constitution. Uh, the Florida law, every 10 years, the state of Florida puts together a revision commission that travels around the state of Florida, holds hearings, and uh, gets ideas for what changes should be made to the Florida Constitution, and then it's put on the ballot um, at the next general election. Uh, it was in uh, 2000, and, uh, I'm sorry, in 1997, uh, that the Libertarian Party was very involved in that convention, in that, in that uh, revision commission. Uh, that's when uh, Tom Renier and uh, some of us others that were running the state party at the time uh, made sure that there were people up speaking at every one of those events around the state. And uh, revision 11 was put on the ballot as a result of that. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention that that's going to be going on. Uh, if there are issues that we think need to be put on the ballot for, for statewide referendums, uh, we need to, th there will be a meeting, a public meeting in Tampa where people can get up and speak during the day to the commission. Uh, and, and none of those dates have been set yet. Okay. It'll be in 2017. I'm just oh, throwing it out because, oh, okay. because these things really, I thought I thought like, no, yeah, no, 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 these it's things, that, no, these things take about a year and a half to really plan and organize. Who points to the committee to revise the constitution? The, um, in this, I forget how many seats there are in the commission. I think it's 10. So uh, five Republicans and five Democrats, you like it already, are assigned to serve on the revision commission. Uh, and then they go around the state and um, they uh, listen to the citizens and what revisions they think should be put on the state, on the ballot. Uh, but the Libertarian Party was successful in getting something on the ballot last time, rather than doing a ballot initiative and all that's involved in that and signatures and so on. Uh, we, we went that route and got it put on the ballot through the Revision Commission. It only happens every 10 years. What was it? Uh, that was the uh, Revision 11 uh, leveled the playing field for third parties. Uh, until, that, until that time, if you wanted to get on the ballot as a libertarian, um, I'm forgetting the percentage of signatures you have to gather. Uh, okay. Let's say if you're a Republican. You have to gather X percentage of signatures from the people you're going to represent from your party from your party. <coughs> As a third party candidate at that point, you had to get that same percentage, but of all registered voters. So in other words, it made it about three and a half times harder to get on the ballot. Yeah. Uh, these are some of the red menace laws from the 50s that were designed to keep the communists out of government. <laughs> that worked. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, so, um, and we were able to change that law and a few other aspects of the law to uh, make it uh, fair for any of the parties to gain political access. Plus back then, whatever fees you paid in, um, you'll love this, whatever fees you paid in to run as a candidate, you didn't get back. The Republicans and Democrats got their fees back. Uh, libertarians and minor party candidates, uh, that party, that money went to the election process and then was divided up between the Republicans and Democrats. So, isn't that great? So, um, <coughs> but we were successful in doing that before. 
So if, if there's an issue that libertarians really feel need to be on the ballot, um, that's something we could help coordinate and then work with the state party as well because you want to have speakers at every event around the state as they're going. So there's the perception of support for it. I just want to bring you up on that. Um, moving on, I have a, as a third item here uh, a newsletter for the county party. Um, we have to do something to reach the 1,700 registered libertarian voters in Pinellas County, and, uh, or in Hillsborough County, uh, that we do not have email addresses for. Um, and I, I put down newsletter, for, for lack of a better better term. Um, but we, some of them are members of the state party. Um, there's only really an overlap of about 80 people that are members of the state party and are um, and are registered libertarian voters. Uh, there are there are many other state party members that are not registered libertarian voters, and then there's some that are one or the other, but not both. Um, so I wanted to throw out the idea of getting something in the mail to these people. It could, it could be a simple letter in an envelope, but we're talking about some expense because we're talking about you know, 1,700 of them. Uh, it's going to run eight or nine hundred dollars if you do it first class. Like Looking at a lot of money, but we're never going to get 10, ten grand in the bank unless we build the numbers. We're in that situation. I'd rather phone them all, and that's possible. Do we have phone numbers for them? We do have phone numbers for them. I'll just start dialing. And that's a possibility too, is to start doing personal invites. How about a robocall thing? It's only seventeen hundred of them. Can you make Yeah, no, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. I, I am now, I'm dropping a letter out now to, you know, we get eight or nine new people, 10, 12 this month that sign up as Libertarian voters in Hillsborough County. When I get that list every month, I send a simple letter out to them with our links and just an invite. So I'm doing that. Um, but we've not done anything to go back and reach out to all of the other ones that are, that are there. You said there's 80 people that are? Both. Both. That are LPF members and registered Libertarian voters. And of course, we have those email addresses. Um, can you just do something in the mail to those people to mm -hmm. get them to the meetings versus? Sure. I mean, you know, in a low quality like that, I'll do like I've been doing and just print those letters and envelopes in my office, you know, and just buy some stamps and put it on. We're not, we're only talking, you know, 20, 30 bucks worth of stamps to those. But we're talking about, you know, if we wanted to do a printed piece, you know, put it out in the mail, even bulk mail, you're looking at about eight fifty, eight hundred fifty dollars and we haven't got that. So, but we, we, I still haven't bought these business cards, which would probably be like fifty dollar, forty yeah. dollar expense. Maybe we should be ordering a, a postcard instead, with the same information. That way, you can just send them, send them postcards for mm -hmm. twenty six cents, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Does that make any sense? Mm -hmm. You guys carry postcards around, hand them out to people. And you know, you, you can. Where do you have room? Uh -huh. Pocket. You do like a three by five, like a yeah, smaller postcard. postcard. Mm -hmm. Versus a business card. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, you can put a postage card stamp on that and throw that in the mail, which is what twenty. How much is a postage card? I mailed a post. I mailed a postcard in a long time. I haven't mailed anything except for this letter. Um, but some kind of outreach. Well, I get stuff in the mail from the, the National Party all the time. And sure. It, it is their letter. Their like you would send out a letter, letter, and at the bottom is both the paper. Give a donation, donation back. They put the envelope in, but we wouldn't. That's a lot of money. But at least a link saying, if, you know, you can't make these meetings. You can do a reoccurring donation mm -hmm. or one-time donation to this website and something that every piece of mail I get from them is just an update on something. But it's really just an update and a fundraiser, and that's what you do. Yeah, they always have to be in fundraising, did, fundraising mode. I did get a call from them. Well, do we want to do that then? Do we want to? We can divide the list between people that want to make some phone calls and start doing some calls. Um, plus, you know, a month or whatever. We'll be leaving a lot of postmates. It's fine though. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, that's fine. Well, and again, it's about getting them to try to get to, uh, directing them to the website so they can fill out the form so we can, so we can get electronic contact information. We're trying to get email addresses we'll from those registered voters. Alphabet. 
then one through 22. And they asked again for my email address. And then the same guy personally sent me an email right afterwards saying they need to talk to me. And right. And yeah. Set up a so quick. You got a list? You got phone numbers on it? Mm -hmm. Great. You can just give it to me for a while. I'll okay. it up and figure out like Google Doc or something like that. Probably that Make sure that. Yeah. I think it would be interesting to, to put an effort onto that prior to the next meeting and see if, you know, if we, if we make an effort the two weeks before the next meeting to invite people by phone to see, see if we get a bump in attendance and get a few, get some new blood you in. Write a basic script to yeah. yeah. You want to author a, can you author a simple? Sure. It'll be part of the document. Hi there, hey there. Once we can get up to the point where, we, where we've got a thousand or so coming in on pledges a month, then we can go back to look at doing quarterly newsletters and that sort of thing, and, and uh, doing more outreach there. But you know, we need a, to have any kind of outreach and communication. We need to have an inflow of about a thousand a month. So, but we're not we're not getting there with our present well, member we'll numbers. Put the T-shirt for sale on our website. Come on, I'll get us at least forty bucks. There you go. Uh, net. That'd be that's net, right? Um, all right, so moving on. Um, all right. Continue. Vice Chair, you have any? <coughs> Vice Chair? Yeah. Do you have anything? I do not. Okay. I like that the LPF has that uh, don't tread on anyone. Mm -hmm. The spoof yeah. on the Gadsden flag shirt, which I think is pretty clever. Don't tread on anyone, Libertarian Party of Florida. I think that's pretty clever. And that's a great crossover for reaching the Tea Party people, too, yeah. by the way, which are about 80% of the way here. Hope. There's something in there. Matt might put the heads up like that might be something if you guys are interested in well, buying a lot of anything, them. any t-shirts or anything like that, especially if we're going to be doing this outreach stuff. Like I have a libertarian party. Yeah, the quiz. I, I mean, it's an outreach yeah. getting this quiz out well, there, getting people to take the quiz. We store on our website at some point. You know, if we really could sure. generate some income Why on not? it. Especially close the trickle. population here. Trickle, nickel and dimes, right. Especially with the Tea Party since now the Republican Party is running people against the Tea Party candidates get them beat so they establish so you get back to control and the people yeah. can't It'd be great yeah. to set up May first as an annual event for for a downtown event would be a great idea. Yeah. I like that. It's all right. Whatever. Yeah. Okay. Um through the treasurer's report um is nothing really new attached yeah, this this goes back a bit to uh, this is just a spread back to October, yeah, yeah. so it includes up to current. Right, nothing uh, new except the uh, the web page uh, purchase that's in early okay. 917. All right, uh, and I'll get to this later in the agenda, but we do have a resignation letter from the treasurer, uh, and I'll talk about that when Thanks we get when we get there. Yeah. Um, there's some web uh, one of our websites says you need to update your contact information. Did you get that? In the last week or so. Updating what information? I think it was GoDaddy. Okay, I didn't get that. Did you? You got that? I Is that an email? Was it to verify? Oh, that's the new ICANN regulation. Um, when you set up a new domain, you have to verify it okay. within 60 days. You know to do that yeah. I'll go chase it down. For no good reason. Yeah. yeah. You think you did it? You don't know. Uh, no, I didn't receive that. Okay. Email. Yeah, we we uh. We bought um, L LPHC.org to go along with the, I mean, there's an LP.org and LPF.org. So we bought LPHC.org. Um, right. It just points to our other domain. Uh, to our HillsboroughLibertarians.org, which is a little bulky. So I've been finding myself typing in LPH.org, <laughs> too. Um, so it's good to have both. So then without objection, then we accept the financial report as presented. All right. Oh, do we have someone taking minutes? Susie. By the way, are you Susie? Thank you. Thank you very much. That's okay. <laughs> we have our closet libertarian over there. All right. We need to add a libertarian to that The libertarian corner. No, sorry. No. What else do we need to work on? I, I'm, I'm not sure. there yet. Um, They're the most thorough set of minutes here I've ever seen. Did you do this? Wow. 
Wow, we have a transcript. This is amazing. Um, I, I went back and reread it. It was like re, it was like reliving the whole two hours. It was, Did I see it was, that? It was, it was great. All right, so um, so you do have that. And uh, Kevin or you, one of you, is posting this uh, online weeks in advance on the on the EC. It goes on right now. That's great. I am typing as, as you're doing it. Talking. Shred it up. Fly. That's great. We have about Video a ninety fly. second delay. Because it is. And I'm typing. It's That's great. Live, like, so people cannot make the meeting. Like our secretary shouldn't be here tonight. Could actually go home and watch online on his phone or on his tablet. Great. And keep up to date with what's going on. And they do have the ability to call right back, and we all will know when we have yet. Okay. So just so you know, they can. They can come in and you bring it up. Right here. They still have the capability of doing that. Good. That's one of the reasons we're using bamboo doing that. Do you all, uh, have you read this yet? This was posted online a couple weeks ago, but have you, uh, any comments or to the minutes from the last meeting? Um, or is it, or it's, like it's five pages, pages front and back, um, well, it's three sheets front and back. It's in your packet. It ends with a brief and subtle mention of recruit. I mean, and that is what we're about, right? As a political party, our job is to recruit new people, try to replace ourselves, uh, try to bring in new talent, and raise and spend a ridiculous amount of money. And I mean, that, that is the purpose of a political party. Yes. Right. It's not an ideal system, but it's the one we've inherited, so that's where we're at. Win hearts and minds. Some action items you mixed in here. I'm certainly going to report on mine. Some complete, some complete. Yeah. Okay, then uh, we'll accept the minutes without objection. Okay. All right, there we go. That's why I just, I just do it without objection. It doesn't require voice vote or it doesn't require a second. Uh, if, we, if, we just, if, the, if the chair just motions to do it without objection. It's just a way of moving it faster. If you'd rather do everything the other way, we can. No. All right. Um, Okay, moving on then, uh, campaign committee. Uh, we've not, we do not have a chair for the campaign committee, uh, but thought that was an appropriate place to bring up the candidates forum that was held a couple of weeks ago. Glad we did it. It was a good exercise for us to do it. It's a good start. I think it's something we need to plan to do every time there's, there's an election coming up. We just get it on our calendar months in advance, provide a location, this or another, for those candidates to come and answer libertarian questions because they're not getting them anywhere else. Yeah, I mean, it took forever. It was really long, completely long stuff. But um, yeah, if all of, if even like two more candidates showed up, that would have been have a good plan. Well, and you know, you can, you can schedule it for an all day too. Was, you know? it, was were they pretty receptive towards that? They were great. No, it was it was a the, their the their participation was. I tried to yeah. listen to it and I couldn't hear. I yeah. Hear well, we'll have to do that. We'll have to deal with okay. it. I like that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> to deal with the audio issues and some of the life. technical issues. But I think. If it's something that if it's something that we plan, of course, way out, and it's on our calendar for the year that we're going to be doing these things, uh, and if we get every candidate or more candidates involved, we may want to say, hey, at one o'clock, we're going to be talking to these people from this way. You know, at, at 1:45, we're going to have these people. You know, and then we take it that way, and uh, just have those candidates come and just make that part of the Hillsboro political calendar. Maybe we should uh, do like the district. I mean, there's just like uh, three at large mm -hmm. races, and then there's like three district races. Mm -hmm. Way ahead of time. You know, sure. We were crazy late on the whole thing. We need to but it was, it was, it was, I know it was a last minute idea, but it was a, it was a good event on your part to, to, I mean, to put that together quickly and do it and get we any need response. To get timer for the, to yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Run it more in a well, debate forum, if not a debate. Yeah, I know. But I so it's very good. And then it gives, it gives libertarians a chance to decide whether we want to endorse any of those candidates that aren't running against a libertarian. And uh, there may just be someone yeah. out there worth supporting at some point. And we should, we need to, you know, I don't, I don't think we need to do this much, you know, maybe wrong, but we need to attend these meetings, uh, county commissioners, uh, afraid to ask, but who's attended a county commissioner's meeting last yeah, week? Well, that's it, and you know, that, that's, on that's one of the descriptions yeah. under the political action yeah. committee, is that people that are on that political action committee would be attending, you know, all of these government, all of these elected officials' meetings, and so the LP has a voice. Post it tonight, you know, next week. We let them know. 
But again, all of that takes a lot of manpower. Yeah, we should probably do a social. That's why we're recruiting members. Go out for coffee or dinner and then roll into those meetings. Just be, make a presence in our t shirts, for instance. For know, sure. We've got any color code, whatever. And, uh, yeah, we want them to come to the point where they look up and sigh because the libertarians are in the audience again and they know they're going to be held accountable. Okay. You should all be bamboo Not that it's unfriendly, just that there's accountability. Well, those things love more screen now. From a libertarian perspective, yeah. All right, then uh, communications committee. Why don't I move and you come on up here? You Hi, put guys. The, you put the tie on. I figured you wanted to use it. Kevin O'Neill, communications chair. Um, so I was just going to say, great job. We did do something. We had a candidate forum. So <laughs> go, Team Libertarian. Um, you know, um, it shows we're real. We are an existing party. Um, other people in politics from the other parties will be able to see we did something. And um, I learned I learned a lot. And um, I looked at I looked at some of the product that they're I, think, I don't know who they are like the Young Republicans Club or something did a similar forum. Their video sucked and you couldn't hear anything. So you know, way worse than ours. I don't know what the Democrats do. I don't even don't even track them. Um, but uh, so we did something. There was a, uh, a a neighborhood association that did a very nice production. They had uh, mics and a Zoom camera, and, and that looked really good. So, you know, there's only three candidate forums on YouTube for Tampa. We were one of them. So, you know, that's, well, at least we could say that. And even though we're kind of bootstrapping it, you know, with this bamboozle and stuff, the whole point is we're, um, this month I'm going to hopefully get on the, our website and start deleting all the old stuff and re rehabbing it. But uh, we're going to stick a whole library of videos in there, so at least it shows we're active, and hopefully that will be an aid when people try to figure out if they want to spend time with us to um, see, you know, we're doing we're doing things. Um, all right, so, uh, so that was something I wanted to mention. Um, <coughs> the other thing was that we discussed, uh, we discussed engaging with the sheriffs, or the sheriff and the three ch police chiefs in the county, and... Um, <coughs> I had I had a conversation with Sheriff Mack like a month and a half ago, and I was trying to line him up to, to do a uh, Skype with us on his TV, but um, I, I don't know what he's got going on, but sometimes we have an administrator who's dealing with me now, so I wasn't able to get his, his attendance. Uh, you, Patrick, you were talking about cop watch. Do you need somebody there to stay anywhere with them? I did actually speak with a couple of those folks. I gave them your information. Did they ever contact you? Was he supposed to call me, or uh, they were going to contact you by Facebook? I gave them your Facebook account. So. I mean, it's uh, possible. Wally Sullivan and what's the other guy? Can't think of it right now. Dave 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 Dave. I mean, I've got I've got yeah. like uh, an ex-wife and stuff. No offense, Daniel. And I just try not to expand my Facebook social circle very far. Okay, no worries. So I've kind of clamped down there, so they may have contacted me, and I may have not friended them, because I have no idea who they are. You okay. know what I mean? Right, right, right. Um, do, do you have phone numbers for them? I'll call them up. Uh, I could get I could get so I went to their websites. Just like you know, I went to the CopWatch uh, webpage. I guess they, I think it's CopWatch, like a national organization that has like a slash Tampa or well, something. Yeah, there's, uh, there's uh, these folks are from the Lakeland area, uh, Brandon area. So they have an email address. I emailed them. No I'll response. Get, yeah. Okay. I'll I'll try to get something more local for you. Okay. No, it was definitely the Tampa guy that okay. I emailed, um, but nothing. Nothing came back. And what was it? Did what, did, what was his name? I it was it just the top watch slash Tampa, and it said contact okay. us through email, so right. it was like an email. <coughs> so the point I'm getting at is, um, you know, we're supposed to be protected of the Constitution as a part of the Libertarian Party. The sheriff is, you know, the major linchpin in that. And um, I have no idea who this guy is. Maybe you guys do. Um, I know locally in Tampa, the chief of police is retiring. Um, I've got some, some stuff on her, uh, on her in my head. Um, and uh, there's going to be some process for vetting candidates for the chief of police in Tampa. I, I personally think it's important for us to have a, you know, uh, knowledge of who these people are and determine whether we want to, you know, we think they're on board with support the Constitution. You know, specifically, you know, I definitely want to make sure they're not interested in following orders from the federal government, for God's sake, and um, doing something crazy like collecting our guns. So, um, 
I'm interested in the, the police uh, being on the people's team and not the government's team. So uh, that's sort of my kind of angle on it. And um, I know it's controversial. I think we can get some press. I think they can help build our brand. I think it can be a, a um, uh, I guess, an issue or a topic that can pull people from, from anyone who's a Second Amendment person. Uh, it's certainly going to pay a little more attention to us. Um, I, I'm not at all voting on, I'm not trying to make a determination whether, you know, somebody's in the box or not, because we really haven't spoken to them yet, unless somebody here knows them. I, I don't know them. Uh, but I think we, we were, we thought, you, last month we agreed to um, spend some money on sending them books from Sheriff Mack from um, BSPOA. Um, let me see if I can remember that the uh, yeah. full description of them. BSPJ. Uh, one second. Constitution. Yeah, there we go. Thanks. Oh, he screwed it up. Constitution. The Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officers Association. Yeah. <coughs> and uh, he's got a book on this topic of you know if, if you're a sheriff or you're a chief, you know what is your responsibility? And it's really constitutionally minded. And I guess he added some chapter on the Bundy Ranch and stuff, being a case case example. Mm -hmm. So that was a guy I'm trying to line up to speak to us. But really, I think um, that's that's the topic we we'll want to kick around for the purposes of communications. We can get some press releases out of it. We can get some uh, you know, interview time with these people. <coughs> At the same time, you know, just so happens we're, you know, Tampa's gonna be hiring a new police chief and I don't know if I don't know if the outgoing police chief is gonna run for mayor or do something with the federal government. Oh, the mayor didn't announce he's running for Congress. The governor actually, I think. Is, governor, it, that's is right. it Congress? Maybe you change. No, it is governor. Yeah, we were saying yeah, last month the guy had 350 yeah. grand in the bank, and it was like, what is this guy doing with 350 grand in the bank? So I guess now we know. Too much money from that. <laughs> yeah. For this political campaign. Right. So, um, so we may have a shakeout going on, and I know the outgoing police chief is very popular in town, so she might have a shot at running for mayor. And um, but nonetheless, um, does anybody have interest in this? Does this sound like a rally? Okay. Yeah, the idea still is to try to get a couple of people. I don't want to push this if you guys are interested. Yeah. Get some, these people, no. if somebody yeah. to come here and do, a, and do a presentation at a meeting. Was that? Was um, that angle you were looking at either basically. <coughs> Sheriff Max been out. This, and, 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 um, Okay, yes, the answer is yes. Um, so uh, Sheriff Mac has a website, this, this organization has a website. Uh, there's only like two or three sheriffs in the state of Florida that have signed up under his, he has like a, uh, a, a oath that basically hits the highlights of, you know, state and federal constitutions and what, you know, and what their, what a sheriff needs to really be doing. Um, so I think, um, and there's, there's a sheriff, and police and law enforcement, and then there's a military, and then there's a citizen list that they maintain on that site. At some point, and I'm not here to tell you on this now, once you all got a chance to go through the material, I'd like for us all to sign up um, as citizens who, who agree to this, to this gentleman's oath to, you know, basically protect the constitutional rights of the people. Um, and then just in mass, just be on his website, because that'll be, that'll be interesting, and it'll be good branding, I think, for libertarians to have us all you know, at least in this county, um, active members here. Is there room. somebody locally here that's real involved in that organization? Because um, if we're doing this event... There's three sheriffs who signed on. Okay, if, if we're doing <coughs> this event, it'd be a great opportunity for one of them to come and, and speak on it. Well, I ran up to Sheriff Max said he'd come down here and meet with these people. Like, we set up the meetings, he'll show up and meet with them. So, I, anyway, just put an administrator on the email with me. She wanted money to have him do Skype and stuff, so... Um, I'm thinking there's a little disconnect. They wanted an honorarium to do a Skype presentation? <laughs> nice. Whatever. So, uh, Oath Keepers is another similar organization that's definitely military focused. Um, I'm not, I don't think it's the right fit for us, but um, if anyone knows any connections with those guys, they also would be good people to talk to. But in the end of the day, I think we just need to let the sheriff and the chiefs know we're, we're wanting to talk to them. We want to give them this free book on what it means to be a sheriff and to be a constitutionally minded one. And, um, and at the end of the day, basically, is scared, scared citizenry. We just don't want these cops doing the bidding of the big monster in Washington. So uh, that would be bad. Um, back to what I was saying. <coughs> so I'm sorry I don't have somebody to produce for this meeting, but uh, we're going to be producing somebody shortly. And uh, I'm probably going to be, I'll, I think I've already sent you the links out to these documents, but um, I'll send them out again. Um, business cards. We were, we're fooling around with Google this past week. Um, I was slammed the first two weeks since our last general meeting doing the 
candidates for him. It really only about 10 days ago to get freed up to start getting back on the track here. So uh, this past couple weeks, um, was there a true Google problem or was it just me that was the problem with the whole Google thing, Brad? Was, was there like no, 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 there's, no, there's an issue with the password. Okay. <laughs> we, we had this like... It's all set up now. Oh yeah, no problem. Everybody so we got the Google problem fixed. Places, so we, we got it worked out now. And uh, we're, we're back in tr on track. So I have been doing all the stuff on my personal account. I'm going to drag all my YouTube videos over to our um, Hillsboro Libertarian Party at uh, gmail.com. Right. And, um, we got a YouTube channel, and I'm going to start loading it up. Do you guys have any content from any related and relative events you might have been to that can go on our YouTube channel? Probably not at this point, no. Like, why, we have a Wiley house party we did. Uh, we got a video for I, that. I can shoot some of the stuff. Wiley stuff that I've made. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so that's the six months ago to start getting into the website and organizing that. And, uh, and all of our meetings that will start being posted, too. Right yeah, yeah. They're, they're out there now. You can find them. Uh, I just need to tag them better so people can find them more easily. <coughs> um, you just gonna upload them directly to the you can upload them directly to the YouTube channel so they're searchable. Basically, we bamboozle them. You know, a real dirty cut right to bamboozer. It's yeah. a file format that gets transferred to something else, and then and then you can edit it up and then stick it up on YouTube. Okay. What we learned is that when you transfer, it takes in a little bit of space. Oh, it's a little time. Yeah, just six so days. I didn't realize that when we started the three hour nice. And then you can edit it, and then you can save it. So it's a little bit longer of a process. Yeah, unless you have editing software on your end. Some junk or something. Everything you know, you can't edit with the, you have to download it live. Oh. So it's fun. <coughs> so, um, it we're, we're going to have a bring a friend to the next Libertarian meeting. That was one of our outreach efforts. Um, recruit, recruit, recruit. I but did that last time. I brought Daniel, and then okay. she brought somebody last month. Right. So Deanna signed up to become a agent for our voter register, Brian, and uh, hopefully under our party uh, chair's state registration, we'll be signing up people to vote. Uh, that's great. Awesome. Thanks. Um, no, I never got one. No. No, we turn in the paperwork and you never receive a notice. Email us people. I know it says you're going to, but. Well, no, but you've got, you've got one in way back in the day that you had sent in it and you gave us a letter and said. I never got one. You never got one. No. Um, he signed up. You never got one. Did you, like, contact me to make sure you're. Because no. I've seen the letter. Yeah, I guess they don't do them anymore. Did maybe when you send your form in? Maybe the initial. Maybe when the party initially was like set up as a as a uh, as a registrar, yes, but and you added individual people, no. I just seen this letter. Who's Brian Hester? Hester. Yeah, he's he's in Germany now. He was chair next year. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I just remember when it was, they filled it out and then they got the letter and then they had to have that letter with them to prove that they were a resident. That was the whole thing. Yeah. They had the, I remember it being a thing you had where the DC had the letter and you guys had to have the letter with you. <coughs> well, I think one of those links I gave you is like this real detailed procedure on the whole thing. So I, I don't remember seeing anything about a letter coming but out. You, you guys have registered people, and then you just take the form to somebody, and they just say, "Sure, take it." Yeah, I, yeah. I take I take the form. He has to get it back. I take the form into any supervisor of elections office. They have our ID and our number here. They pull it up to verify that we're one of the people that are allowed to collect from. Right, and you they do. It. Like, I'm just like you. No, you can't. Uh, I'm a sub agent. You guys can drop them off directly to. Oh, you mean the voter registered forms? Right. Yes, yeah, like 72 hours. Yeah. Three days. No one. They don't care. They don't ask I, I apologize. Do I was talking about the original agent <coughs> form for me, but yeah, the voter register form just happened. He, he was standing there, so I just handed him right to him. Right. Yeah, you bring it, you bring yeah. it to the supervisor of elections office within three days of when the signature is gathered. And Definitely got to give it. pull up the party to verify that your, your name is on there, that you're allowed to drop things off to collect signatures, and that's it. So so you I think you're supposed to receive. sign something on the back, some, some kind of. They'll have you sign something, and they'll give you a receipt. receipt. And you've done that. Yeah, I've done I've that. Done what we right. just described, and Brian was standing there, and I delivered him to Brian. Okay. Yeah, I dropped him. I would think we'd all want to do them ourselves, so we know that 
We should, we, we, we should put a video. We put a video together for training purposes. No, 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 just, just take it to the SOE yourself. Where are those people? Signatures. Just take it to your local supervisor relations office. There's three or four of them in the county, and they can accept them for you. And they'll give you a receipt for uh, the ones you turned in. Um, that might be a video we can put together too, just for new members, so they can easily figure out how to do it all. Um, all right, so voter drive. So um, ironically, we live near the drive-in movie theater in Tampa. They have a flea market four days a week. Um, we were at one point going to sit up a table and sell coffee and, and, uh, and vote sign up voters. So um, the real question is, you know, who, who has who goes to markets? You guys do any farmers markets or flea markets? Go out there every weekend that particular one over here. Oh. What are you selling? Anything I can sell. <laughs> I used to buy and sell all the time. All right. So um, we, I guess what I'm getting at is for communications purposes, we should be having a, you know, an effort to get out to these markets, set up a table. Typically, it's free. You know, we're a not-for-profit political organization signing up for voters. Uh, we are constrained. We can't tell people, sign Libertarian Party of Florida on all your forms. But, um, you know, I don't think there's any constraint about what clothes you wear, what the sign behind you, behind you says. No. So. And you can probably do the quiz. And you can you split, the, and you can split the tank, yeah. one side uh, something else like coffee sales or quizzes or handing out literature, the other side is voter, yeah. voter registration activities. You, you really need to get a cheapy laptop. <coughs> yeah. A what? A cheapy laptop. Tablet. You need to get a laptop donated so we can be able to sign people up on your I think the paper thing's fine. I don't know. I don't want to rely on a laptop. It's the not very personal. Either way. That market you guys advertise on Facebook or post it out, it only goes till noon? Six in the morning till noon. The hour before oh, that was a yard sale. We were gonna do. Oh, we, okay. we delayed it. Sorry. Thanks for reading that though. Well, no, no, I, I tried to take it down. Like <laughs> 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 no. Yeah, we were, we were gonna have a yard sale, but we, we postponed it. And I was gonna just see if we could fill the front yard with people, so sign up all the people at a yard sale. Last weekend Last I was weekend. talking about doing that, and then we canceled it. Remember we were gonna do a yard sale on Saturday? Yeah, we postponed it. Yeah. Well, I, just, I was just asking if this farmland thing is only in the morning, so. Yes, it, it is. It pretty much is. I mean, it's like the same mentality. Carrot, like that North, uh, North Tampa market. Mm -hmm. you got the one right here, like too. <coughs> All right, so that's it for me. Thank you. Yeah, because they're obviously doing movies, so there's just. Well, any public opportunity where we can set up a table. Or one, but they're all there at the green, and then they're all gone. Yeah. If anyone uh, finds of an opportunity where we can set up a table and, you know, run a booth or run OPH, um, that's the Operation Politically Homeless. This is what uh, the world's smallest political quiz is actually called. Um, then uh, yeah, I think we, we need to be doing that. So if you know of something, at least we can do it. Yeah, we have the so it's all about building. I mean, if, yeah, I mean, again, if we have, we have good, you know, eight, ten good people involved right now, a bit of effort, we double that. We've, we've really expanded our ability to have impact. The other thing that it's I exponential growth. The, the other thing I'd like to share, though, about that same topic is that I participate in a lot of farmers markets and community markets and different things, not necessarily me personally, but as a team. Mm -hmm. And almost every single market I have ever been at anywhere in this entire Central Florida location waives the registration fee and booth fee for political and nonprofits. So if you go in and you say where this, right. you won't even have to pay the twenty dollar booth right. fee as long as you're getting the oh, word out. About reaching selling. one person at a time. Yeah. building, adding one good person in at a time. So it's free. It's just volunteer hours. Yeah, and presence. Um, under communications, too, uh, uh, we will have a phone number soon for the party through through Google. Yeah, right. And, and then we're working on uh, that will that will go to voicemail recorded and the file is sent to someone. Just so we've got some number out there that we can put on these new business cards that we can put on the site. Of course, better to have somebody answer it, and maybe we'll get there at some point. It can forward to but at this point, at this point, if we're receiving it as an audio file and we can respond to somebody's voicemail, we just need to be reachable in every possible way and easily accessible. Uh, so that'll be a nice addition. I don't think that's happened before for the county. So um, that's something else that, that he's working on there. Um, okay, membership committee. There's not a membership committee chair. That's probably the most important position we need to fill. Uh, so someone who's responding to people that are inquiring online. Online on our website right now we have two forms. One where people say, hey, I'd like to become involved, please contact me. These are the areas I'm interested in helping in. And then another one where they actually join the county party. Um, but uh, 
we need to be thinking about a membership committee chair and who we can encourage to come for that. Um, we will at the next meeting, um, I'm going to announce it online now, we have to give two weeks notice, but we need to go to announce, I'll get, I'll get it announced online that at the next monthly meeting we are going to do elections again for, for the open positions on the executive committee because we need to give notice and encourage people to come and consider serving and filling in on those positions. They do have to be elected now, of course, and, and we do have to give at least two weeks notice so before we can elect someone. So we couldn't, for example, elect someone tonight. We've not given notice to the membership. So we'll need to do that next time out. But if somebody does come up, I can appoint them as a non-voting member until someone, they or someone else is elected. Yes, sir. Uh, okay, and this would be a big task, but something that I know has been brought up at the state level about the um, independent and independent party where yeah. people thought they were registering for yeah. no party and they registered for, got tricked into registering for a party. Is everyone familiar with that problem? I, I mentioned it in the, the yeah this is a this is a big issue I uh, to, to just to digress from that I'm planning on when I take your paperwork down Deanna, um I want to I'm going to go down to the the main downtown office for the supervisor of elections office and I'd like to meet with him um, and I know I'm going to ask him a question I know that is not within his authority to change but I, but I want to move in that direction um, I feel very strongly that every registered party in the state of Florida should be listed as a checkbox on that registration form. It should not be Republicans, Democrat, right in others. No, it's zero party. If, if, you, if you're a, if you are a, well, that doesn't fix the problem though. But I mean, if you if you are a registered political party in the state of Florida, you should have a checkbox on the state of Florida's form. Okay, and I think that's something I, I'm very, very passionate about that, partially because of this problem because people will write on their independent. They mean no party affiliation. But the receptionist that gets that looks at it and says, they either mean independent party or independent party, and they never put them under no party affiliation unless you write no NPA, no party affiliation. So people are being assigned to a political party that they did not intend to join, and that to me is an issue. So that may be our reason to pursue that. Uh, I think it's a viable lawsuit. I think it's something that we need to seriously look at. We need to ask them to change it. And if it requires a legislative movement to change it, I think we need to pursue that. But if not, it's something I think we should take to court. I think it should be changed. Who's the victim? Voters. You've got to find somebody who's the, the independent party. Well, doesn't want to be the voters. Well, we already did. did oh, you? yeah. Yeah, they already did. We that's what we can when we go out and do these voter drives. Well, look, look at the numbers. Sign saying, have you updated your voter registration? Right, right now in Hillsborough County alone, there are 21,000 people plus change that are in the Independence or Independent Party, and I guarantee you they did not mean to align with those two parties. Yeah, the Independence has been going okay. down. Like 21,000 and in change. It's on the report, but 21,000 and change between those two parties. Uh, that think they're no party affiliation. Um, right, when somebody comes and says, oh, I'm no party, are you? Do you want to give your card? Yeah. yeah. So, so, I mean, that's, right something right that's something that needs to be changed. Yeah, that's a free service that you get offered. Yeah. If you're just saying, hey, we can help you understand, verify that you're right. registered correctly. Once we have the numbers for that kind of outreach, it's a great outreach. You know, you are actually registered but I guarantee you that, if, that if, if the Libertarian Party was a checkbox on that form, our numbers would start going up sure. significantly. No, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and then there's unknown, which means they couldn't understand their handwriting, so they stick them in unknown. And somehow that, that number, they add a few every month, and it always seems to disappear. They put them somewhere eventually. I don't know how that works, but they put them somewhere. Um, but that's a huge problem. You're right, and that, that's something I think we need to look into. But I'm gonna, when I go down there, uh, I do want to meet with our supervisor of election and, and ask him about that in that process to get those check, that checkbox added for all the, for all the minor parties. All right. Um, on a membership committee, item one. When we changed our bylaws and made the requirement that you join the Hillsborough County Party directly, uh, we discussed briefly at that time, I think this was the December meeting, um, when that would change, how, you know, how those people, at, at what point does the Hillsborough Party no longer recognize your state party membership to be a member? 
and we decided that we wouldn't decide right then <laughs> was basically the outcome of the dialogue. Um, but I think it's, it's time to decide. I think it's set a date uh, so that we can notify. What we can do if we can pick a date that is, you know, we, we recognize your membership in the state party as membership in the Hillsborough County through this date and after that point you need to actually go on the free form and fill it out in 30 seconds and become a member of the Hillsborough Party so that we have an active database. It's nice to look at the numbers and see it's, you know, 100 and whatever people, but those aren't really people we can count on and people who aren't involved, right? So I, I want real numbers. Um, and then we can email those people or I can drop a letter out to the ones that don't respond of, of those state party members in Hillsborough and say, you know, please go online real quick and register as a member of the but county party and ask them to and, and call them and ask them, right? So we, and we can do that. Um, it takes 10 seconds on that form to fill it out, do the three check boxes and you're done. Um, so, but we, we need to come up with a date, I think, by which um, we no longer recognize the state party members as Hillsborough party members. I think it should be after the convention. I was thinking it should be before our how does it How does it affect the convention? I was thinking after the convention, I don't know, that would be a date where maybe, correct, maybe some other during the convention. Yeah. Well, I mean, we, we continue, continue to sign people up all the time. Well, the 2015 ends, because we elect in January, so. You see, and I'm thinking end of March. <laughs> okay. Because how much notice do you have, how much notice do you have to give to people who are not currently involved? These people do get emails from us, they're just not currently involved, so how much notice do they need? Well, <laughs> well, everybody in the LPF is still going to get our emails, whether you're a member or not. What do you think? I don't think they're going to be a member. They need to see if this is our second request. Get him anytime. Yeah. Look up. I mean, if it's, if it's you know, hey, it's, it's through this date, but we just need you to go to this site and fill it out and you're a member. See, uh, what, what I was surprised to learn was once you become a member of the, of the state party, some of these people have been members for years. They may have never done anything. They may have never been involved. And they're certainly not members in the real sense of this county party. But it's membership for life. Once you join the state party, it never expires. There is a column for expiring on the database, but it, do, but it doesn't. I guess I don't really care. So I, I'd rather see it sooner or later so that we have an, an idea of, of who really the membership is that we can be calling upon and, I do have a question. and and asking to be involved, or else we're dealing with fantasy numbers. Well, now, another thing, the one thing we require the states on is that you have to be registered libertarian as a state. You don't have to join the you don't have to be registered libertarian to join the Libertarian Party of Florida. But I know we're requiring you to be registered libertarian. Not to be a member, just to be a voting member. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, you, you do not have to be registered as a libertarian. You have to not be a member of another party. It doesn't mean you're not registered to vote. Voter registration and membership are separate. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's one over there. Yeah, some, some of you in here either have online or have not uh, done it yet, but the form's here. There's a bunch on the table. Uh, what it, the three requirements uh, is the non-aggressive principle, uh, that you're not a member of another party. You know, you're not a member of the Hillsborough County Republican Party, for example, okay? Uh, and that you're a resident of Hillsborough County. Those are the only three requirements. It doesn't cost anything. Oh, okay. So yeah, if right. someone answers yes to all three of those, gives us the contact information, then they're a member of the Hillsborough Party. But yes, to vote, to vote in county affairs, you have to be registered to vote as a libertarian and be a member of the county party. Of course, I think I was um, but back to the, that original point was uh, a date at which we only recognize people that have that have registered directly. I did before we did. Yeah, you did. Yeah, I don't think I did. You did. Here's my question for you. Um, I, don't think, I don't think you did, Deanna. State party, I don't think I got your state party Facebook person, um, Lynn Baker or something like that, or uh, Lynn House. Lynn, Lynn House, maybe. Yeah, she she was posting some stuff about hey, this county just signed up with the you know. Um, so we're obviously splitting our own personal bylaws from the state, but we're still That's tied okay. to the state as an some affiliate, of course, right? Yeah, some counties, yeah, no, we're still a state affiliate. It's just um, within the structure of the LPF, you can either adopt all of their members as your own, um, or you can set up your own membership criteria, but you're still a member of the state party. You're, you're still an affiliate of the state party. Okay. So it's just memberships are different. We've got voter roll, we've got state party, we've got our little Hillsborough County group. 
Mm -hmm. Three different solicitors. And national. Not connected, basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Each of us can be a member of three different libertarian parties, the national, the state, and the county. All right. Are they, so and they're all separate memberships now. Like screwing the works up. No. For how no. And when I send people the, you know, thanks for becoming a member of, our, of the Hillsborough County Party, when they get that email from me, it says you may want to consider joining, you know, the state party, here's the link, and the national party, here's the link. And changing your register, your voter straight registration. To go off topic, but you brought it up, Lynn House. I anything with the state, there are county parties. We can send her, even though it's supposed to be the secretary, she's been doing it. You can send her a message on <laughs> Facebook saying, "Can you post this on the state Facebook page?" That's what I did with the convention. I say I need this to be, you know, I know we're posting it locally, but can you post this for the Libertarian Solutions page or the Southern, the Libertarian Party of Florida page, and then they'll post it. Meeting, especially if you're in Tampa, you, you have a meeting, but you have to get something. You can you can post it yourself on there, share it on the page, but it goes to the mm -hmm. yeah, the yeah. Has to be approved. So right? Okay, good point. So do we do that now or not? We don't. We don't do that now. Okay. Let's do that. Okay, yes, we do now. Yeah, I'll do that. It's supposed to be Charlotte <laughs> is the secretary of the state party, but I don't know if she's doing it. No, Lynn's still doing a lot of that job. Still. still. Um, you're, my, you're my Lynn friend. <laughs> you do a lot of website stuff. So. It's okay. It's okay. We're, we're building numbers to spread the load, right? That's what it's about. Um, so I, I'd like to make a motion that we recognize, uh, we continue to recognize members of the state party as Hillsborough County party members through the end of March. Second. And so be open for discussion. Th th I can put out an email right away that lets the members know that. And all they have to do is go to the form and fill it out online and they become a member of the county party. People that don't respond really are not interested in what we're doing and being involved, I would think. Doesn't mean they're still not going to get our emails. It just means they'll be getting them off a, you know, off our lead list rather than our membership list or off the state party list. And they may still be party, state party members and active there and not choosing to be here. That's the whole idea of the separation. Anybody opposed? Is there a, there's a motion and a second, so is there any other conversation on it before the vote? Mm -hmm. Then we'll call the vote then. So of the voting members, all in favor of of that date? Any opposed to that date? Okay, so four to one, motion carries. Um, and then monthly socials, we talked about just having casual events that are not meetings. On occasion, there will be a monthly social uh, now the fourth Wednesday of the month in Brandon uh, that I'm going to host uh, at O'Toole's. It's coincidence that it's $10 prime rib night, but um, so uh, anyway, so uh, that's that that is an event that we can just invite people to come to and sit around and talk about politics and news and chit chat and get to know people. It's really meant as an outreach. Um, in the past, when we used to do these on a regular basis, there are people that will come to those. They'll never come to this. They'll never come to a business meeting or rally or hold signs or do any of that, but they'll come to the socials. So if anyone else has an idea or a location in mind or a date in mind, then we can set up a regular event that you'd like to host. Could be a you know, it could be a it breakfast be at Starbucks, it could, it could be in anything. And then they don't have to be regular monthly events either. Yeah. They could be a once a quarter or an afternoon or a casual um, or well we can Yeah, there we go. Pre-May pre <laughs> Day event. <coughs> the pre-May Day event. <coughs> I really love the May Day angle. The anti-communist May Day alternative is a great idea. Hmm. Run up the flagpole, right? Yeah. I was always the fifth grader that messed up the ribbon thing at our May Day thing at school. Um, all right. The, um, <laughs> I don't make a very good communist, I'm afraid. I'm sorry. Um, but if that's something you're interested in doing and finding a location and time and place that you can be at most of the time and, and just host a gathering of people, um, I guess it would, yeah, let us know that and I wanted we can to start ask posting. A question here. <coughs> Clay City has an election in like six weeks. You know, obviously, we just got stalled in January. There's just yep. people here. Um, we didn't have anything going on with that. I think Temple Terrace is coming up. In, it's either this June or next June. I apologize for not knowing right now. <coughs> but likewise, you know, we, we, as far as candidate committee development type work, I mean, we really need to start eyeballing people for, for running. And so 
some of these, even if it's just a little podunk, podunk position, to run Canada. it only costs maybe 300 bucks in some of these little municipalities to stick someone on the ballot, and it gives us, it gives us Paper Canada. candidates yeah. to be running. So. Mm -hmm. Something to talk about when we're, you know, as the political season goes through, we can talk about how we got Joe Blow for yeah. Plant City and Betty Boo for Chump Terry. It is historical fact that whenever you run a candidate, we gain members and registered voters. So that's the, uh, Even if it's not an active campaign, the party still right grows as a result. But does your list have this all parsed out for district? Is that district on your mm -hmm. list? On the, what, which call list? Your the voter list? 1,500 oh, people yeah. we're going to call. The 1,700 yeah. registered libertarians? Do that, you're going to touch. This is something you can email. Right? Yep. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, you oh, yeah. Or well, there's an online well, there's an online form. Right. Have you filled out the form yet? Sure. Anybody or click on my URLs on my posts? <laughs> I always post a bunch of URLs of yeah. petitions. And there's a join us link on our website. Real easy to join. Um, okay, we already covered that. Red light camera initiative. Oh yeah. Do you want to um, speak to that? Yeah, I'll speak a little bit on that. I'm not going to understand that. Um, okay. Then I'm going to. I'm going to bring the leprechaun over here since it's being recorded. All right, it's kind of a, it's kind of a two-step process, but I'll let you all know what's going on. Um, I guess it was back about six weeks ago. I came up with the, now actually it was the day after the um, gubernatorial election. I came up with an idea um, working with Hillsborough County for Liberty. It's kind of a coalition type thing. I'm going to um, put do put together petitions, and it's going to have to be four petitions. Um, one for Tampa, one for Temple Terrace, one for Plant City, and one for Hillsborough County um, to um, put to um, get people to sign, sign up, to try to put it on the ballot, so people can have a chance to vote on red light cameras as to whether or not they want red light cameras in their city. Now, the um, big thing is ATS. This, they have a regional office here, and their attorney is here in Tampa. Um, now, I know that up in, um, I know when we met, four of us met back in early Jan January, the, um, they had thrown, out, the judge had thrown out, or the county, city council had thrown out <coughs> the um, petitions in, well, Brooksville. Went to Brooksville, and, um, and I talked to Paul Henry, who's really knowledgeable about the law, and he said that <laughs> the, the person misread the law. He said the, um, it allows for, the law reads, it allows for cities and counties to put in red light cameras. It does not say it requires, and the person, the city attorney interpreted it as requires. Um, as it was, the new lady at the council came in and voted three to one to have the cameras removed. And as of the end of December, the contract, and it's not the ATS with another group, will end. Um, but um, that's what I'm going to do. Um, actually, there's also a project I'm doing working with school and on my thesis. But I'm trying to show, and this may be something else we can help build with it. Um, it's kind of an education thing to get more people not involved, is um, build up knowledge and involvement, get people to know more about what's going on with the cameras. Um, so um, that's my thing here. Um, also, thing we're kind of working with in joint is um, there um, is a no tax for tracks. Um, I'm working with working with Sharon Calvert for that. Um, there's a group called Gold Hillsboro, and um, you know G O, Hillsboro, and um, what did I put here there? And I've got some stuff up here. Um, one thing they have is they're having these regional planning meetings. I've got a bunch of things on here, but um, they have these meetings where, and actually there was actually one just up here last night. I couldn't attend because I was in class. But what they do is they're having these meetings and they're doing all these workshops to try to say how great it's going to be to have this, get, charge us this extra penny in sales tax to put this light rail in. So 
that's something we're kind of working in conjunction. So if we could get people in to get people to these meetings as well. I'm sure you've seen the video of, uh, I think it's in Seattle, they have a light rail video, and it's like all the crash video of all the cars running into the thing. There's like hundreds of cars in this like 60 second video, just all taking left turns right into the train. Mm -hmm. Just go right down the middle of the road, you know, the train. Yeah. So, yeah, not with our senior citizens in Texas, people want to go really well. Yeah, definitely. That's so, but there is there is a list of um, meetings up here. Um, if we get some people to the ones, there's one in Plant City next Tuesday. That would be good. Go to this meeting. Yeah, you could just get to say, and bring up some issues. Say, well, big thing is we have so many roads in um, Hillsboro that are already grade F that need to be fixed before we raise. We get mm -hmm. a try to spend money to get rail. That's something I'm working, we're working in conjunction with the red light cameras. So, all right, great. I'm that's, done. That's a uh, nonpartisan. Yes. Well, we're working. involving group that needs right. to really carefully keep the balance of political yes. connections in there. Go is supporting track. Yes, Go Hillsboro has a Facebook page, and they're the ones. And no, no tax for tracks is the Sharon Cowards page. That's the one we're not. We're anti. And then, of course, I have the group page that we're on that I haven't done a whole lot with lately, but I'm slowly building it. Um, so I, I don't know, lady, I think you mentioned her, the woman in Pinell, Pinellas has led the No Tax and Tracks effort. Do you know her? No. She, she basically had a budget of like 3000 bucks that she took out oh, that Pinellas. entire rail system yeah. on a shoestring. Yeah. yeah, but she gets like a zero award for a register in the necessary, but I'll pay tax to smell it. Well, I added um, Joe Jordan. Every, every single event that yeah. I went to for Wiley, I mean, she she's just her, personally that she's there up. all the time. Let's give her an award. Let's give her an honorary award. That's a, sure. that's a hand or a... Um, yeah, I agree. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, update on the state convention. Wait, she needs to use up her comments. Uh -huh. Can you give a hands up and you don't use our... A few things. They are having vendor tables and ads just like we did last mm -hmm. year. The cheapest ad they have is a $25 business card size ad, and then a third of the page would be a $50. Their, their prices are higher than ours were last year. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if we wanted to, I don't know what our, I didn't look at the money, would we want to to support them? since they helped us last year oh, to say a little ad saying good luck on your convention. I I'd just thought of it actually right now. Especially if we could raise it tonight. That would be great. How much is it for business card? $25. Okay, is that a proposal then? Is there a is there second to... Is it like a vendor table type thing? Well, vendor table, which I don't know why we would yeah, need. Yeah, I don't even need a table, but... Dollars for the, yeah, yeah. They, they, but they just put an ad in the program to help support the convention. Their cost to the convention. Yeah, they did that last year for us, right? Yeah. They did they, the whole did um, the hospitality whole, room. Yeah. And Pasco County Pasco. did the whole hospitality thing yeah. with all those free sandwiches and free food. Yeah. Region convention last year too. Right. Yeah. So we can, you know. So would you all be in favor? Would you all be in favor, all be in favor of the county party then putting a twenty-five dollar ad in the register? Okay. And if you wanted. Hundred and fifty total. Yeah, yeah, we'll, let's do that then. We'll go ahead and do that. There's a, there's consensus to do that. And if you want to make a contribution tonight to the county party to help offset that or contribute to that or exceed that, are you still feel free. Your right? Yeah, back there. Six left. All right. Secondly, for the convention, you have to be a registered LPS member by April 6th in order to vote at the convention. Right. Is there different levels of voting? Like, no, it's just. You're a delegate or you're not one. a delegate. I have a few delegate forms here that you can fill out. They have a whole thing online. But yeah, to be a voting delegate, they do want you to register as a delegate in advance so they can verify you in advance. I'm right. Sure. If you're registered, you can fill out until the convention, but we need to push people. I'm going to start going on, since I have the opportunity now on Facebook, to make posts um, about the convention. For the paid for our, our sister county next door, right? Right, and well, hopefully yeah. we can have a big turnout. Um, and you can post now directly to Facebook. Right, and I'm going to start. I great. did the first thing with the solar okay, great. Um, yeah. petitions. Now, we have a meeting May 13th is the last meeting before the convention. The convention meeting? 
No, June. Oh, our meeting. Right. Yeah. May 13th, at least if I look correctly on the calendar, you guys might be able that to tell good. me. I would like for us to send out a thing either statewide or from the chair, somebody to the state membership since the chair's up for re-election. There's a few different um, regional representatives. Um, I'm not really sure all the who's up for re-election, um, but to come to our meeting on May 13th and give the plea why we should vote for them at the convention. Of course, such a big county um, last convention. What would, last be, the, what would be the best way to, to do that? To reach them? Just decide to make the time for them and communicate, right? We have I one can, other names? I don't know who. Yeah, we don't. We don't know who's going to run. The chair, Dana's the chair now. I'm not sure if she's running, but so, there's so going to be people out? who are chair, thinking. So who's Chair and vice chair should be up this year, right? I think they alternate. Or is it? Is it? Is chair, vice chair, um, odd numbered regions? Um, one and yeah. three at large. One and three. At large, one and three. And then regional representatives every year. Every year. Every yeah. year. Correct. Which would be Hillsborough, Pasco, Pinellas, and Hernando are our. Are our you a regional representative? I am not. Brian was a regional rep last year. We had before last. Yes. Yeah, we need I'm a really active again, regional so rep to do some more. And that, that would be another thing to grad school. So. Right, again, a regional rep, we can contact yeah. the, the state. Uh, there's a real desire, county. I think, for the, the counties to be working more closely together, but there's not so much coordination. But that, that would be our the meeting before that. the convention, so they would want to come to our. And when we did this before the convention a few years ago, there were. were mm -hmm. I think there was at least two or three people that came out to our group and from across the state. Yeah. They weren't here yeah. locally, and they came yeah. across the state to talk to us. So Dana asked if she asked Charles <coughs> if he wanted to agree to the debate. He did not. So, so I. So says, I mean, it's something that so I. If I wrote a little limitation and LPS put it on their mm -hmm. Facebook page, for example, yeah. as an invite, so that we would probably be okay. A, we can they do a. They can come in person event. or send a video that. We can throw exactly. on. Yep. If they're interested in running, they could send us a video we could watch. We're going to do a. That's for the May. 13th, 13th. If, that's, if that's the correct. It is, yeah. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll do that. Attend. Is that a problem? I'll write that and do that. I don't know if I'm going to attend. Yet. Yeah, please plan to attend the state convention if you if you would all can. Um, you can still, you, they would love you to Good networking event. Good, mo good, yeah, good yeah, motivational yeah. event. It's, it's, it's a good event. And it's real close. So. I mean, when it gets closer to it, it, you could do a thing where you could yeah. do a carpool there if you only wanted to go for the business meeting on Saturday versus going spending the weekend. But yeah, great. Where is it? It's in Newport Ritchie. Um, let's see. Let me tell you where I have all the information here. There's a website, but there is the Quality Inn and Suites in Newport Ritchie. There's um, functions Friday night. There's functions all day Saturday. There's a business meeting all day Saturday. Saturday night, there's a banquet that right now is tentative. Gary Johnson's going to be speaker at, since he's hopefully maybe be running for president. Um, and Sunday, there's a finish up with a business meeting and breakfast um, and some events went on Sunday as well. So it's basically a full weekend. And there's all different types of packages you can get through hotel rooms to doing everything to just going to the business meeting, which is free for anyone to attend. You just have to be registered libertarian to vote. Is that where the votes are occurring at the business meeting? Yeah. And just to sit <coughs> in on it is, is kind of... Sure, it's always, there's it's always... Yeah. It's great. There's always bylaws changes, there's always proposals and some interesting things going on. Um, and then if anyone posts anything, since I'm kind of going to take the lead on the convention, I am taking the lead on the convention. If anyone, if I see a question on the Facebook page in relation to the convention, if somebody just tags me on that, on a comment, then I'll see it and I can answer the questions if you don't know the answers to it. Mm -hmm. Anything else on the convention? All right. Um, is there a link to the website from the LPS site, probably, for the convention? There is definitely right on okay. the main page. Right, but it's, it's really easy. We might just add that to ourselves. And, and when I, um, I'd like to get in the habit of our, and this is something we can work on, Kevin, and anybody else that wants to contribute, an email newsletter to the Hillsborough County Libertarians uh, would be nice to, for us to start doing, and we can include that as well. Uh, that's an incentive to join so you can go to the convention and vote. 
Um, under old business, we still have the LPHC articles of incorporation. I've not followed up on that since the last meeting. Um, Matthew Nellens and I, thank you for the leprechaun, noticed that the, um, that um, the Hillsborough County Party is not incorporated in the state of Florida. We have an EIN number, but we're not incorporated, so we're trying to look at, and the other county affiliates are not either, or most of them are not, so we're just looking into whether that's necessary to do um, and, and what the history of that is. On some of our documents, it says Hillsborough County of Liberta Libertarian Party of Hillsborough County, Inc., is what it says on some of our documents, are, um, but we're not incorporated, so we're trying to figure. Out, you have an EIN number. We have an EIN number. So you can register. We're trying. To, we're trying to chase that down. Yeah, and 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 we have bank accounts, and that's what the EIN number is from. But um, but we're trying to find find out what that's about, and if there's a reason to do it or not to do it. Um, so that I I have no real update on that other than to restate the the concern. Um, survey of committee members. Um, Kevin, where are we on that? You're talking about doing a survey? Um, I've got one. It's okay. going to go to the biggest team members and pretty much an attempt to get a biographical, professional rundown of who we all are. So we put uh, a little blurb. It's kind of going to be like used for anyone who's joining as a state team member um, would get this and ask, yeah, to fill it out. And the purpose of that is so we have the people we can go to for certain issues. Like if you work in the fertilizer industry, you'll be coming with us to Monsanto to collect a $5,000 check, that kind of thing. Um, I don't want to say it to a mosaic, I apologize, mosaic. Um, and then just be a go to group for questions if something comes up on that, on that industry. Um, and then secondarily, those will be similar ones just, just on our website, they'll be a little more exact than what we got now. So where we have it is, is it, it's written, if you guys give me some comments, I need to just rewrite it. And Uh, 
so for the sake of branding, the Libertarian Party of Hillsborough County is our official official name. What I wanted to throw around, um, printed a few things, but I found they fell in line. I don't think they did it. Well, there's that one. Well, the Pumpkin Porcupine is the national icon. We also party, but it's not necessarily uh, an icon for Houston business party. We have we have that one. It's somewhere. Yeah. So oh, okay. I may have I may even have been given that along with all the other party stuff. But yeah. Um, what what I was going to there's a few these are not suggestions. Nothing I designed, but just things that I printed so you could see. That's what's on here. The Hillsborough County Libertarian Party. Um, the one that's up there, which is the state of Florida, counts as the state party. Uh, and then there's this one that we use most often, although not 100% consistently, with the national party. Um, what, I, what I'd like, or what I would suggest is going with something like this, which has the state of Florida on it, maybe putting a star where Hillsborough County is and taking off the 1971 there and putting of Hillsborough County in place of the 1971, since that's the National Party sign on there. Uh, and then just adopting that sort of consistency with state and national, but it's a clean, simple variation. So you can go with or without the, the Florida map on there. Uh, any, any other thoughts on that? I know that there is a Kentucky Hillsborough County That every few years, they kind of want to redo the yeah. new people come in, they want to swap it around. And if we, if we adopt one and all of a sudden the national sign is different, is that a problem? <laughs> well, what they have to install it. Yeah, yeah. I think that's actually pretty neat. Yeah, I like that too. Yeah. You want something that, that you could use in a full art like that where it says print well on your fine art? I, I guess, what, how many, how many members?
Anything else? Any motions to adjourn? Is there a second? All opposed to adjourn.